What we have right here are two incredibly popular phones. Essentially what you'd be buying if you wanted a fast, powerful 5G phone with great cameras and a great battery life, but you didn't want to spend over $1,000. Right here we have the brand new Google Pixel 5a and the Samsung Galaxy A52, the A52 5G or the A52s 5G. I'll explain what the differences are in this video, but between the Pixel and the Galaxy, what are the differences between these phones? Well, this is a classic story of minimalism versus maximalism. Both of these phones deliver what you need for less than half the price of a flagship, but they do so with a very different approach. So in this video, I'll be comparing these two phones head to head and diving into the design, the specs, the cameras, and overall my experience using these phones to help you decide which one's the right one for you. So we have a lot to cover in this video and tech release season is in full swing right now. So if you guys wanna see more videos about the newest phones coming out, the newest earbuds, watches, please do click that subscribe button and that bell icon down below. Now, looking at these two phones, the first thing I wanna talk about are the prices. Now, essentially, when you're looking at them, the Pixel is selling for 449. We already know that's certain because there's really only one configuration of it and Google said it's $449. Now, the Galaxy is a little more complicated. I mentioned that there was the A52, the A52s 5G, and the A52 5G. Now, I'll explain what the differences are in a second, but as far as pricing goes, the A52 naturally is going to be the cheapest. Depending on where you are in the world, that might be the only one you can get, uh, or the A52 5G, if you're in the United States, is going to be the default for most stores, and that one is going to be about $50 more than the Pixel 5a right here. So we're gonna focus on that, essentially a $50 price difference, but Samsung also announced the A52s 5G, which is essentially the A52 5G with a slightly faster processor. Really the processor is the main difference between each of those three. And like I said, I'll talk more about that when we talk about the internals of these phones. But let's start off now with the physical designs to see what's actually different on the outside of these phones. Okay, so right off the bat, these both have IP67 water resistance, which is fantastic. But when you're looking at the back, they're actually a very different design. Despite being a relatively similar kind of matte finish, they're very different in a lot of ways. So the Pixel, first of all, has an all metal unibody and it is only one color available. This is kind of a dark green. They call it almost black, but it really is like a deep forest green. Honestly, I think it looks really nice. On the flip side, you'll see the, the Galaxy right here has four different colors. This one's obviously violet. And I'll show you the four colors on the screen right here. A Little more bright, a little more vibrant. And you'll see that we have kind of a contrast. It's a plastic back, which I think feels pretty nice. There's not a lot of flex there. And it feels similar to the metal unibody of the Pixel because the Pixel is coated and it feels kind of plastic on the outside. But on the, on the outside, uh, like all along the edges of the Galaxy, we have kind of a nice aluminum looking rail, high reflective, uh, glossy finish there. And I mean, honestly, both of them have a really nice aesthetic. But again, it comes down to, like I said, a common theme throughout this entire video is minimalism versus maximalism, where the Pixel is obviously the minimalist phone here, very simple aesthetic, only one design, only one color, one configuration. And so, you know, there's just one option here. Whereas the Galaxy, you have all those different colors, you have the different designs as well, like I said, the 52S, the 52 5G, uh, and right here, the 52, of course, as well. And uh, you have a lot of cameras going on here as well. So the camera bump is a little more subtle on the Pixel uh, than it is on the Galaxy A52, where we have four cameras on the back of here. But I would argue that really they have almost a, the same camera setup. Don't be fooled by seeing more cameras on the Galaxy. And I'll explain why in our camera test later on in the video. We have USB Type-C ports on the bottom for both of these. The Galaxy A52, a little benefit here is that it supports 25 watt fast charging while the Pixel is limited to 18. Realistically, that's a subtle difference, but neither of them have wireless charging, unfortunately. Uh, so as far as charging goes, you know, a subtle advantage for the Galaxy. They both also have a headphone jack, which is another positive for a lot of people that don't want to go out and buy, uh, you know, wireless headphones or earbuds. But that really brings us to the front of the phone, the display, which does have a pretty substantial difference here. You'll notice, first of all, that it is slightly larger on the Galaxy. You're looking at a six and a half inch display versus a 6.3 inch display on the Pixel. Overall, from using them, I'll say that I don't notice a substantial difference day to day. Like they feel relatively similar, except for a few major things. One of them is that, remember in the beginning I said the A52 had three configurations and the main difference for them was the processor. 
Well, there's really a second difference as well. And the second difference is the refresh rate. So the A52 has a 90 hertz refresh rate, the A52 5G has 120 hertz, and of course the A52 S 5G also has 120 hertz. All of those are nice. A faster refresh rate gives for a smoother feeling experience when you're going through the phone. The Pixel, unfortunately, is limited to that standard 60 hertz, which is probably the same as what you already have at home, whatever your other phone is. If you're gonna upgrade to these, most older phones have 60 hertz, but the 120 hertz or even the 90 hertz is definitely a major win for the Galaxy A52. On top of that, although they both have 1080p resolution, it is a super AMOLED panel from Samsung versus the Pixel's just OLED display. Like I said, they both look pretty decent, but when you turn them on, you will notice that it is, like it does look a little bit better on the Samsung display. So I think Samsung, again, the A52 pulls ahead here with a big positive having that better display with the refresh rate and uh, with better colors and better blacks, better vibrancy, overall a nicer display to look at. Although one thing talking about looking at it, it is a little bit of a drawback. I like the hole punch camera in the center on the top. Although I don't know why Samsung does this. They add a metal ring around there. So when you turn it, it flashes a light a lot. And I just, you always see that metal ring around the selfie camera. That's a huge drawback that you don't have on the Pixel. Another positive with the Samsung Galaxy is that it comes with a screen protector pre-installed. So screen protector, faster charging, better display, and more color options to choose from. I think for a category one of the physical design, the Samsung Galaxy is the clear winner, which is no surprise. Samsung really is a company that excels with their hardware, even with all their flagships. So as you can see right here, the Pixel generally looks a little bit more natural, a little bit more full, while the Galaxy tends to make them look a little brighter. They both do a decent job of 2x zoom, but again, you can see a little bit more saturation, a little bit more uh, brightness with the Galaxy. When you zoom into the max digital zoom, again, I think it looks a little bit less noisy with the Pixel. In low light, they both do a good job, but once again, a common theme here, it looks looks brighter on the Galaxy than it does on the Pixel, uh, so it really kind of depends on what style of photo you're looking for. Now I said that they really have the same lenses. When you look at the macro lens right here on the, on the Galaxy, that's not something on the Pixel, but the regular lens does the decent job with the same photo. The ultra wide looks really good on both of them. It's slightly more distorted on the edges with the Galaxy, but I don't like how warm the color is on the Pixel here. Uh, when we go into portrait mode actually with the selfie lens, I'll leave this up to vote. I think these both look really good. They do a great job with edge detection, good sharpness, good color on both of them. And I was very impressed with the portrait mode on the rear. Again, the fourth camera on the Galaxy is the depth camera. And I'm gonna argue here that it doesn't actually do anything. You can see the Pixel and the Galaxy both do a good job of detecting the edges of that couch. Okay, so now with a video test, this has never been the strong suit of the Pixel, but you can see right here, honestly, the colors look pretty natural on both of them. As we walk around, they both have optical image stabilization, and this is just the standard zoom. They're both shooting 4K right now, but we can actually zoom out to the ultra wide, as you see right here, uh, very seamlessly. And we can also zoom in to 2X, again, very seamlessly, still very smooth on both of them. So I think, realistically, these both look and sound pretty good. But leave a comment below and let me know which one you like better. All right, now this is a video test using the front-facing camera on both the Samsung Galaxy A52, as you can hear with the audio right here, and the Google Pixel 5a. Now I think the 5a, as you can see, is a little bit more cropped in. I think the color looks a little bit more natural on the Pixel, although it is limited to 1080p, while the Galaxy A52 does up to 4K. So leave a comment below and let me know which of these two you think looks and sounds better. All right, next up, the internals of these phones. This is where I said we're really gonna be talking about the different configurations of the Galaxy A52. And keep in mind, each one has a different price. I'll have links in the description below because depending on where you are, certain models will or will not be available and they all have different prices all over the world. So looking at the processors, we'll start off with the Pixel. This one's easy. Right now at the time of release, it's available in the US and in Japan. Unfortunately, it's not globally available yet. And the processor in here is the, Sam is the Snapdragon, not the Samsung, the Snapdragon 765G, which is what we saw in the Pixel 5 last year and the Pixel 4a 5G, a solid processor, very fast. All right, and then bear with me here with the Samsung models. We're looking at Snapdragons and all of them, and generally lower number means lower performance. So higher number is better. Now, looking at these, there's a lot of sevens and a lot of Gs here. So in the Galaxy A52, we have a Snapdragon 720G. In the A52 5G, we have a 750G. And then in the new one, the A52S 5G that Samsung just announced, 
we actually have the 778G. So that's the one that's actually going to be better than the Pixel. The other two should be slightly lower, but of course that's a lot of spec sheets and numbers. And while it is important, really after using these phones, they both feel very quick and it comes down to the software is really going to make a difference. And when you're using the Pixel, I can just about guarantee it is going to feel fast and smooth for a really long time because Google owns Android and they're giving you a, pr a pure Android experience, which means it's lighter, faster, and it's going to give you like a nice fast experience even with this 765G, which is by no means a slow chip. It's a fast chip and it's going to feel really nice. Now on the Samsung A52, on all three models, again, it does feel very quick on all of them and you are running Samsung's One UI 3 on there on top of Android. So it might feel a little bit slower with the animations, but all things considered, the A52 S 5G does have a more powerful chip than the Pixel. So I hate to go through so many numbers with you guys, but talking about the battery life, we have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery on the Galaxy and a 4680 on the Pixel. But keep in mind, like I said, because you're running pure Android, Google does a really good job of managing power. So with both of these, you're getting like about a two day battery life. I'd say with the Pixel, you have a better chance of lasting even longer than that. So in this category, I definitely have to hand it over with internals. I think the Pixel does a better job. Of course, dollar for dollar is really what we're looking at here. If you're gonna spend that money on the A52 S 5G, you are getting a more powerful processor. But I mean, just to give you a blanket statement, I do prefer the Pixel here because that software does make it feel faster, makes it feel smoother, and you do get a really impressive battery life out of that. And speaking of software, you do have some fundamental differences here as well. Although it is kind of a little bit lighter of a feel with the pure Android on the Pixel, it does also come with some extra features as well. So you have things on there like identifying songs around you. Uh, they call it now playing, which can, if you have it enabled, like listen to songs all day long, wherever you are. If you're walking around the grocery store, a song stuck in your head, you can look at your phone and it already knows what the song is. On top of that, you can detect if you're in a car accident, call 911 for you. Uh, it can do all types of things like that. It can put you on, uh, like if you get put on hold, it can hold for you, or you can even screen calls when they're coming in so you don't have to worry about telemarketers. Now, on the flip side, Samsung has plenty of their own software as well. With One UI 3 on here, you've got tons of things from screen recording uh, to like, even if just look down on the top right here, you'll see uh, like a lot of little quick settings up top. We've got live captions, we've got focus mode, and of course you are in the Samsung ecosystem here, which means if you want to get like Galaxy Buds or a Galaxy Watch, while they definitely still work with a Pixel, it is a little bit smoother, a little bit easier to integrate with the Samsung device, being that a lot of that is kind of baked in natively on this phone. So as far as software goes, again, minimalism versus maximalism, that one I can't really give a clear winner to because it depends on what you're looking for. One big downside with Samsung that they started doing recently is they do kind of shove ads in their own apps. So a lot of times, you know, really anywhere throughout this interface, you might be finding ads in there. I think that's a little bit of a drawback, but otherwise, I kind of would, I'll leave this up to a vote. Why don't we do that? Just leave a comment below and let me know if you prefer Samsung's One UI or Google's pure Android. As far as software goes, I mean, they're both really impressive, but which one do you like better? So in conclusion, like I said, minimalism versus maximalism. So, but when you're really looking at it, that kind of ties in very well with the overall maximalism approach of Samsung here. You have a lot of configurations, a lot of colors, a lot of options, a lot of cameras on the back, and you have a lot of software and features on the phone. But sometimes for a lot of people, I know you just want a phone that just works, which is why it kind of strangely enough, the Pixel has been called like the iPhone of Androids. It's a phone that just works, it works very well, and it gives you a nice clean experience. You don't have a ton of options, but at the same time, for people who are not looking to do intense gaming or, or really specific tasks, it is a really obvious choice for a phone that just works, very clean, very simple, it's a nice pick there, the minimalist approach. But of course, I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you like the Galaxy A52 and the kind of maximalist approach or the Pixel 5a and the more minimalist approach? Honestly, I could go either way. I think right now, because this is so new, I kind of prefer this one a little bit, the Pixel. But like I said, both of them are very solid phones. So leave a comment below and let me know which one you like better. As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
We're actually doing giveaway and I partnered up with Versus and Gadget Byte. So special thanks to them for partnering up with me. We're giving away an iPhone 12 Pro Max, a Galaxy S21 Ultra, and a OnePlus 9 Pro. I'll have a link in the top of the description. It's free to enter, free to win, We're giving away one of each of those. And if you go and follow that link, it'll send you to, you know, do a bunch of different things. There's a lot of different ways you can enter. The more things you do, the more entries you get, the higher probability you have of winning. Oh.